Hello everyone and welcome to the newest edition of the Grand Valley State Sports Report. I'm Brent Ashcroft from WZZM TV 13. We kick off this show highlighting the women's soccer team as they became GLIAC tournament champions over the weekend. We also look at an impressive victory for the women's volleyball team at Wayne State as they fight for positioning as the postseason gets closer. GVSU football falls just short in a comeback attempt against the Ashland Eagles. The Laker men and women's basketball teams played in an exhibition against the University of Michigan Wolverines as they prepare to open regular season play. This week we also feature a cross country athlete and his journey to becoming a Laker. Let's get it going. The Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. Number nine Grand Valley women's soccer team put on a show this past week as they clinched their 11th straight GLIAC tournament title. Joining us now to talk about it in studio is head coach Jeff Hostler. I'm sure you were wondering how the team would respond after that regular season loss at the end there to Ferris State. And boy, your, your team really did with three very impressive wins. Yeah, we did. Um, you know, shot out all three opponents. Uh, you know, over the course of the week. And I mean, three games in one week is very difficult to manage. And uh, thankfully, uh, we've done a good job establishing depth over the course of the season and players continue to step up. All right, let's take a look at some of the highlights of Michigan Tech. This was your first round match. Uh, it's a one seed, Grand Valley versus the eight seed. 5 0 win for Grand Valley. And this is just about how you wanted to see things start for your team. Yeah, we, um, you know, in the match, Michigan Tech, first of all, is a very good defensive team. I think they had the second best, uh, if not third best, uh, you know, defensive unit in the league throughout the course of the season. Uh, they're riddled with injuries, particularly their attacking players. Uh, and they're tough to crack, tough to break down. I mean, we, we didn't score, you know, uh, early. We didn't really generate a whole lot of chances early. But then it took a brilliant strike by Sess right there uh, off a corner uh, that we improvised. Uh, and it's huge to see a freshman step up in a moment like that. She hit balls like that a couple times at Ferris, and their keeper made saves, but that one there was no chance. Lakers uh, out shooting Tech 35-2 to two in this match, including nine shots from one of your star players, Gabby Mancotti. Yeah, I mean, Ava just beat about 35 players uh, <laughs> to score there. Uh, another brilliant goal. Um, you know, but Gabby, you know, came into form again this week. Uh, you know, I think she had five goals and three assists uh, through the through the conference tournament on way to uh, most valuable player. Uh, one nil. The lead was at the half. What was your message to get the girls going in the second half? That we just we had to be more dangerous. You know, we really settled that first half for shots outside the box, and you know here you see all three of these first goals in the second half have come inside of it. Um, you know, Corey you got in the end of a cross is a great sign. She's really played well and stepped up. Uh, you know, over the last two weeks um, and her to follow this with a nice second finish. But again, another goal inside the box. So just being more dangerous, getting closer to goal. All right, Tiffin uh, on Friday, and uh, this match was really not all that competitive. 8-0 Grand Valley came away with the win and, of course, earning yourself a spot in the title match. Yeah, Tiffin came in playing really well um, after dropping their match to us. Uh, I think they went on a five-game winning streak, but... Uh, we, we just have good matchups with Tiffin. They, they try to play a similar style and, um, you know, they leave their outside backs isolated against our wingers and, you know, you see good moments in, in wide areas uh, from our attackers. Yeah, you, uh, your team obviously scoring a, a bunch of goals inside of a short amount of time. I believe it was four goals in under seven minutes <laughs> in the first half. I mean, that's rapid fire right there. It is, um, and executed really well. I mean, they're all really good goals, so. Um, I mean, those are really kind of dream scenarios. You score th that many goals in that short of a time span. Uh, you know, it's pretty remarkable. All right, look at some of the stats. Let's dig into those a little bit here. Uh, Grand Valley out shooting the Dragons 30 to three, and that included 20 to two edge in shots on goal. 
as lopsided as it was, if their goalkeeper wasn't uh, as spectacular as she is, it could have been even worse. So um, their goalkeeper did a very good job. And to be fair, Michigan Tech's goalkeeper job did a very good job also. Um, and here you see a lot of saves. They just they're not in a position to clean things up. Uh, and we did a better job following things in. We've we've talked a lot about um, you know kind of the the dirty plays or the um, you know just work plays and, and that exists with rebounds and getting yourself in front of goal that we often watch. And so, um, you know, as the season goes on, goals become tougher to come by, and sometimes you have to manufacture scrappy ones. Yeah, you guys like to make hay off the set pieces, and you got six of them in this match too, and that always helps. It does. Um, you know, we've, we've started to become a lot better on that, spend more time on the set pieces, and again, you know, this time of year, uh, they, they become even more valuable. All right, title match uh, yesterday afternoon, Saginaw Valley State. Here's some of the highlights of that. Uh, three nothing was the, 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 the win, and uh, three goals from three seniors. You had to like that. Yeah, uh, you know, they carpool up to the game together, too, so it was kind of the joke before and after. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, Saginaw, to be fair, for the first 44 minutes, they were the better, better side. They had the better chances. Uh, they really had to run a play a little bit. And the first time we connected four passes in the, the final third, it led to a great goal, a great cross by Ava and a great goal by Sarah. Yeah, you were mentioned Saginaw playing well. They had five corners uh, in this match. And it, Grand Valley doesn't give up many set pieces to opponents. And you had to deal with that a little bit yesterday. Yeah, um, you know, Saginaw is a team that's pretty direct. Uh, they were very, very sharp in executing their game plan. And, and part of that is to put pressure on you and earn set pieces, whether it's through foul or corners. Uh, we didn't respond very well. Uh, but I give our kids a lot of credit because we came out a lot tougher, a lot more focused in the second half, uh, and, and obviously gave us great goal scoring opportunities like that brilliant uh, goal by Gabby. That's <laughs> about as good as it gets right there. That'll be on the highlight reel for sure. Uh, Jennifer Stinaway, great in goal, obviously clean sheet throughout this tournament. Just discuss a little bit about her play right now as she prepares to go into the one and done portion of the season. Yeah, Jen, uh, you know, in her senior year uh, has been much better throughout the course of the season uh, that you saw one save that she had had to make there or one save that was was noted here in the highlights um, and did a fantastic job so uh, she's going to be key for us down the stretch uh, I thought she did a good job in the second half in, in not only making saves but um, helping us build from the back and being confident on the ball all right the selection show is happening as we speak right now and uh, you don't know exactly what's happening yet, who you're playing, who you're facing, but you can tell us a little bit about the fact that you're going to be at home and how this particular week may be setting up for you, right? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, we're going to be a one or two seed and be at home, so uh, don't know who we'll play, uh, but it's nice because, you know, you get to sleep in your own bed and, and be coming off a bye, so we'll get to scout those two teams all week, do a lot of uh, film review and uh, get prepared to have knowledge on them and, and watch them play Friday. Uh, you know, to tip, uh, tip some ideas to Sunday's match. That's right. You'll get that first round by, won't you? Yep. All right, Jeff. Good luck this week. All right. Thank All right. you. You bet. As we continue here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report, we take a look at the women's volleyball victory over Wayne State right after this. The Grand Valley State Volleyball team earned a hard-fought five-set victory over the Warriors of Wayne State on Saturday afternoon in Detroit. The win gave the Lakers sole possession of first place in the GLEAC South Division after their overall record was pushed to 15-10 and 10, and their conference record was moved to 10-4. and 4. I'm here to talk about the matchup as head coach Deanne Scanlon. Boy, this match was not for the faint of heart. What a roller coaster <laughs> ride in Detroit you, your team was on. Yeah, it was everything it was billed to be. You know, we were battling for first place in the South and for, uh, you know, a higher seating going into the conference tournament. And uh, it, it meant a lot to our kids because we lost a five-set match to them earlier in the year. So to go on the road, which we've done the last two weekends, we've put two really good back-to-back -back weekends on the road and, and have gone 3-0, and which is tough to do in our conference. Absolutely. Let's take a look at some of the highlights here. Yeah. And uh, interestingly enough, neither team really hit well in this match, mm -hmm. did they? Yeah, there was uh, some good defensive plays. Our blocking was outstanding. If you, if you look at uh, Wayne State's numbers, you'll see them with a lot of attack errors and and that is because our, our block just 
uh, mentally sometimes just uh, puts a block in front of that hitter to, uh, gets them thinking that they can't swing swing away but yeah it, w it was really a battle you know a grind like I said very seldom we, you know when you get two top teams is anybody going to just play clean and it, it is what it, it should be it should be a battle two teams playing for first place and um, was really happy with the way our kids responded. We got down early in set one pretty big and we fought back to, you know, the, we lost it in 27-25, but uh, we could have easily given up in, in set one. So, and again, on the road, it's, it's, it's tough in the conference, um, but our kids stayed composed and we had some people come in off the bench and do some good things yeah, for us too. Yeah, you certainly did. Uh, second set teams trading points again. Mm -hmm. It was 5-5, five, five, then it was 14-14. And then Grand Valley broke things open with a 7-1 scoring run, and that was key. Yeah, we served really well, and we ha you have to do that when you're on the road, is try to get the other team is more comfortable in their gym passing the ball. Uh, so if you lollipop serves over, you're going to get it smashed right back at you. So uh, we did a great job of serving and, uh, um, and just finishing some points. That's J.C. Susan there with that, uh, definitely finishing that point to the floor there. Um, that's Sydney Benchley there serving. She's a defensive specialist that came in and served some key points for us um, throughout uh, the match as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, we went to back to running a 6-2 offense uh, and uh, number 12, um, Jillian Butsevich there, she, she just, she hasn't played a lot this year. She's played sparingly, but she just put up a big, huge block that gave their outside hitters some problems. Third set, uh, more close scoring, Deanna. Mm -hmm. Grand Valley yep. broke a 9-9 tie with a 5-2 run to yep. take a 14-11 lead. And then, and then you would eventually uh, take another lead to win that one 25-18. Break down that one for us. Yeah, we talk about getting to a certain point in the match, usually right around 15 or 16, where we're looking to make a run. You know, uh, and, and it just may be we have a really good rotation against a rotation that's weak for them. And, you know, we talk to the kids about that. that's the time. you got to sense when, when it's time to go for blood and, and get a five, four or five point run that separates you. And then you just kind of hold on for a better you know, for lack of a better term there, but you get that separation a little later in the set, it's harder to close that gap. I talk about that fifth and decisive set, uh, the mentality, the mindset of the team going in, knowing mm -hmm. what was at stake. You know what, I, I didn't really have to say a whole lot. I could kind of see it in the kids' faces that they, you know, they wanted this one really bad. We talked strategy a little bit. Like I said, let's just, let's stay aggressive. Let's focus on our block at the net there and, um, you know, kind of shutting them down and keep doing what, what got us there, which was serving aggressively and just making sure we had a good block in front of their best hitters. Now, they had a lead of 9-8, mm -hmm. and then you took a key timeout, and it was that timeout which seemed to spark your team mm -hmm. to, to victory. What did you say in that timeout to It the was team? just kind of a wake-up call. Okay, here we are. This is the point in this match right now at 9-8 where um, things can turn one way or the other. So, you know, we had to really focus in coming out, you know, uh, thinking that the server was maybe not going to serve that aggressively coming out of a timeout. So let's make sure we take care of that first pass and try to get the first opportunity that we get to swing at a ball. Let's put it away. Okay, uh, regular season wraps up this week. Mm -hmm. You got two matches, Purdue Northwest on Friday, Davenport Saturday. Thoughts going in? Yeah, you know, we need to win both of them to position ourselves. You know, we, we have the opportunity to move up to second, the second seed in the conference going into the conference tournament. Uh, so we just need to take care of what we can take care of and then watch the scoreboard from there for the rest of the weekend. All right, Deanne, good luck this week. Thank you. You bet. Next up, a conversation with Laker football head coach Matt Mitchell right here on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. In a battle of two powerhouses in the GLIAC this year, the Grand Valley State Laker football team comes up just short against Ashland on Saturday. Joining us now to talk about the game is head coach Matt Mitchell. Going in, this was one you figured you had to have. You felt good about the way things were going, but again, the last team to have possession found a way to win the football game. Yeah, it's been um, very discouraging, very frustrating the way we've lost some of these games. You know, in this particular contest, the first half, I thought our defense was battling extremely hard. You kind of trade two special teams errors at seven to seven, you know, and then our, and our offense just couldn't get anything going. Uh, we had six possessions in the first half besides the touchdown on the short field. Besides that possession where 
we punted five of the six times and threw a pick on the other six. I mean, we were ineffective offensively in the first half, so consequently, our defense was on the field way too much. <clears throat> Played over 40-some snaps in the first half. And I think ultimately when we started to get to rhythm and a flow in the third quarter offensively um, and scored some points, we were, we were, we were gassed on defense. Um, lack of depth because of the injuries and playing too many snaps caught up to us in the end and we couldn't get the stop when we needed the stop. Ashland getting on the board first, 58-yard punt return. Uh, only took them three plays to punch it in. Uh, that pretty much uh, told you kind of a little bit of the story of how things were going to go. Yeah, and at that particular play we had poor coverage, you know, and so we're down 7 nothing. We did end up um, getting a stop for them backed up. <clears throat> And they ended up snapping one over the head and giving us a cheap touchdown too. So both teams kind of traded cheap touchdowns and then we held them to 10 points the rest of the first half. Uh, headed in the locker room though, probably should have been down one score and not two scores. Um, and that, that you know, kind of was a determining factor when you look at the end of it. Second quarter, Ashland retaking a lead here. A Andrew Vaughn, 53 yards for a touchdown. Uh, another big chunk play that, that they had, and it uh, gave them a 17-7 lead. Yeah, we ran his plays up right there. We ran cover zero. We tried to blitz, try to get some pressure on Tarnowski, and um, you know he kind of creased us in the run game. When you, when you pressure, either really good things are happening or really bad things are going to happen. That particular play had a couple guys with some bad angles and uh, ended up letting their tailback score. Coming out of half, uh, they get possession and uh, put together a 10-play, 75-yard drive, and uh, they go up 24-7 to seven just like that. I'm sure that's not exactly what you wanted to see. Happen. No, coming out of halftime, you hopefully you kind of regroup and get a stop. We didn't get a stop, and you find yourself down now three scores, and it's not looking the greatest. It, it did put us in a mode, though, offensively where <clears throat> we had to try to – be aggressive, you know, and I think that ended up helping us. You know, we went forward on some third downs and fourth downs. I think we were four for four on fourth downs. And, uh, you know, I think we, st we started to tire out their defense, too. We couldn't really run the ball very effectively in the first half. Here you see Bryce on walls, um, you know, running here. And I, I would give him a ton of credit. We tried to have Martavius Carter go. He couldn't go with the high ankle sprain. was ex completely ineffective. So we had a lead on Bryce. I thought Bryce ran really hard, a career high, I think 145 yards uh, for a sophomore being pressed in that action. Kind of got things going offensively. The momentum started to swing back to our side, but um, you know, ultimately when we sky, uh, tied the score up, we uh, had a personal foul, <clears throat> had to kick off from the 20, game a little bit shorter field, and that allowed them to come down and kind of kick that game winner at the end. Yeah, you still had to feel good though. You, you your team battles back, puts together some nice drives, and to come back to tie that thing 24-24 after having been down by so much. You were getting the stops, you were stopping them, and you got yourself in position to win the football game. Yeah, we did. You know, at, uh, we ran a, a really critical fake punt right here, and then this player right here, Bryce Sean Wallace, does a great job diving for the pylon. That ties it up. And away from the play, we kind of have a selfish pr uh, personal foul <clears throat> that, uh, you know, it really killed us on the ensuing kickoff. So these big games where it's tightly contested, where the talent level, there's not a big discrepancy in talent level, these, these small things, these little mistakes we're making are really – you know, hurting us, and we've lost a combined three games now by eight total points all on the road to good teams. And if you look back and win one of those, you know, you're in. If you win two of those, you're probably hosting home playoff games, but we didn't. And, uh, you know, we've got to clean some things up and learn some lessons as we move forward. Okay. We'll be back to preview the final regular season game of the year right after this. This weekend, the regular season wraps up in Allendale with a matchup against Tiffin University. First off, Matt, just talk about Tiffin. What do they bring to the table? Have you looked at anything on tape yet? And are they going to be effective in this game against you? Well, it's kind of interesting. They start off the season really hot offensively. They've kind of slowed down. Uh, they had a retro freshman quarterback, and I think the wear and tear of the GLIAC season started to catch up to him a little bit. Um, they uh, didn't score a lot of points last week because he got injured. So I don't, I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. There was an injury to him last week, Nick Watson against a Michigan Tech, so I'm not really sure. But it's been a team that's a spread team, opens it up, throws it around. Um, usually played some good defense. I think that um, there's been a lot of um, injuries that have kind of hurt their team. And kind of as you expect, in the 11th week of the season playing the GLIAC, they've had some injuries. But this is a chance for us to um, send our seniors out on a high note. We haven't lost a regular season home game in three years. And so to try to keep that intact, a regular season home win streak record. And like I said, we've got a lot of high character kids. I think that comeback last week showed the type of character and resolve that we have. We're just not playing great football. We've got to try to send those guys out that have been a big part of our recent success here, those seniors out on a high note. That's my goal with our squad. All right. Well, good luck in this season finale. All right. Thanks. You bet. When we come back, Tom Cleary highlights a cross-country athlete that has a long journey to get to GVSU, but now has his sights on running into the national spotlight.
Roy Motch has traveled a long way from his childhood upbringing to become a Lakers student athlete. Tom Cleary has the story. When Grand Valley's men's cross country team lines up for the national championship race later this month in Evansville, Indiana, there will be one Laker who will stand out from his teammates. And it's not because he's a head taller than most of them or because he's a black man. What sets Roy Mach apart from everyone else is the mileage he will have put on himself by the time he gets to the starting line. Roy didn't become a runner until midway through his high school days in Grand Rapids, but his race began in Sudan, a country in Africa beset by war and famine during the early years of his life. And since landing in West Michigan as a refugee, he's used that journey as motivation for each day of his life. I came from a different background than usually the people here, but I just look at it now. We're all in the same situation. I'm given the chance to be able to run for a great university like Grand Valley and you know all the tools we have, having GRE. So I try to use that. Two out here, one on the track. Roy was full of energy when his long trip from Sudan finally ended in the Grand Rapids area several years ago. But surprisingly, it took a while before he finally settled into his niche at Grand Valley as a distance runner. If things had worked out a little bit differently, he might have ended up as the next LeBron James or Steph Curry. I came here as a refugee and then I stopped playing sports when I was in middle school. Played basketball for a while until I was in high school, gym class, professor, I mean teacher. So we had to run a mile, so. I was in the class, I had to do it to get the grades. Needless to say, his first ever mile time earned him his phys ed credit and also caught the attention of his school's track coach, who made a beeline of his own the next day to sign up Roy for his team. Soon after that, the athlete who sticks out in cross country races, the same way six foot six inch Usain Bolt does on the track, caught the interest of Jerry Baltus at Grand Valley. And while Roy was far from being a finished product when he enrolled in Allendale, his potential was intriguing. And it's been realized to the point where Mach is now one of the top racers in Division II in this, his senior year. And you look at what he's been through and what he's overcome, it's a, a, it's a pretty special story. And I, I, I don't think a lot of people know and understand um, you know, where he came from and what he's been able to do. So hopefully this sheds a little bit of light on uh, you know, what Roy's overcome and, and uh, what good he's done. At the GLIAC Conference Championship in October at Northern Michigan, Roy led Grand Valley to an easy team victory with his second place individual finish. Now he's hoping to team up with Zach Panning and their Laker teammates to unseat Adams State of Colorado as the Division II National Champions after coming agonizingly close in 2016. Yes, definitely we have a tip on our shoulder. Since I've been here, we finished fourth second and then second again so why we've been knocking at the door that would be kind of cool to actually hammer down the door and finish at the top of the podium and while the final step to the top of the medal stand in evansville is one boy Mach can't make on his own it's really not that much of a climb for a guy whose race started an ocean and a continent away Lakers! long before he ever strapped on his first pair of running shoes for the grand valley state sports report i'm tom cleary The men's and women's basketball teams played exhibition games at the University of Michigan last week as they prepare to kick off their regular seasons. The women's basketball team fell in a hard-fought battle to the Wolverines, 65-43. After the first quarter, the Lakers led the Wolverines 18-15, but the offense stalled the final three quarters, scoring a combined 25 points. This was the seventh meeting between the Lakers and the Wolverines and the first since the 1979 season. They open regular season play this upcoming weekend against Maryville in St. Louis, Missouri. The men's basketball team also fell at Chrysler Arena. Hunter Hale had eight points all in the second half to lead the Lakers in scoring while Chris Dorsey had a team high six rebounds to go along with six points. Grand Valley State held their own against the Wolverines on the glass, pulling down 37 rebounds compared to 43 by Michigan. The men's team will begin the regular season November 10th in Big Rapids at the GLIAC GLVC crossover. It's all the time we have this week on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. As always, head over to GVSULakers.com for game times and ticket information. Next week, we'll take a look at the regular season finale as Laker football takes on Tiffin in Allendale. As of right now, the NCAA Division II Women's Soccer Tournament selection show should be wrapping up. So. 
Head over to NCAA.com to find out where the women's soccer team is playing next. Women's volleyball wraps up their regular season at home this weekend against Purdue Northwest on Friday and Davenport on Saturday. Remember to like us on Facebook at WGVU. We are also streaming this show in its entirety along with each segment at YouTube.com slash WGVU35. Check out our GV Sports Shorts on the YouTube page as well. For the crew, I'm Brent Ashcroft. Have a great week, everyone, and anchor up.